The grand experiment of YouTube Shorts has now been underway for over three years. Can you believe it, folks? Is it good? Is it bad? Do you love it? Do you hate it? I want to hear from you. Leave it down in the comments. Are you a fan of shorts? When do you watch them? How do you watch them? What is your opinion? Today, I'm going to be talking specifically to people who feel like their channels have been ruined by shorts. Those of you guys who are leaving in the comments, YouTube shorts suck. I hate them so much. This is probably for you. So let's get into it. All right, I've got a channel pulled up here. This is one of my buddies. He's actually one of our clients. We've worked with him for right around a year, trying to help him take his channel that he feels like was ruined by shorts and create a long form strategy that would complement the shorts so that way he could see success in both long form and short form. Because you know what happens when shorts ruin your channel? When you blow up a channel with shorts, you get millions of shorts views, but you don't get a whole lot of long form views. You don't make a lot of money. That's the biggest problem. You do all this work, you get all of these views, you just don't make that money. Remember when YouTube came out in February and said, hey, we're gonna start advertising on shorts. And if you're a shorts creator and you're getting this amount of views that you can expect around this amount of income. Well, they grossly overestimated and most people did not make that level of income. So here we are in this predicament. You used to create long form content on your channel that did decently well. Then you created shorts, your channel exploded and now your long form content is stuck. It is flatlined. Today, we're gonna go over what you do. But before we do that, I wanna talk to you guys about this channel. So Austin started this channel a number of years ago. He launched into it with SEO tips and they, you know, he'd get a couple hundred views. Some of his videos would get a thousand, a couple thousand views. But then when shorts rolled out, he started doing content on useful websites. You can see right here, 20 million views, 5.2 million views, 1.6 million views. He crushed it. He got a ton of traffic from this. This resulted in explosive subscriber growth. You guys, I'm telling you, when these videos came out and started picking up steam, he went from 5,000 subscribers to 200,000 subscribers in a matter of a couple of days. It was insane to watch. It was crazy to watch. And then from 200,000 subscribers to a half million subscribers in like another six months. It was very, very fast. Here's the problem. If you go back to when his channel was exploding, his long form content never really picked up steam. Here's before the explosion, here's after. And you can see it got a little bit more traffic, but not as explosive as what his short form content was doing. The biggest problem that I've had with shorts is that if you are not extremely, extremely careful, if you create one short on one topic that has an explosive growth pattern, you are locked into that category. And here's the evidence that I have for that. YouTube sends out a memo when your video is doing really good or when your video is doing really bad. And it says, what's happening? YouTube has admitted that if your video is underperforming, it's because they first sent it out to a warm audience, people who would typically watch your content. And if they don't watch your content, it limits how much further YouTube pushes your content out. So if you blow up a channel with a half million subscribers on short form content, and most of those people don't watch your content, you're screwed. You're in big trouble and your long form content will flatline. As you can see, again, Austin's most successful content was useful websites, useful websites, useful websites. Oh, $100 in 15 minutes as a teen, useful websites, useful websites, useful websites, AI websites. Ooh, there's a little change there. But for the most part, it's useful websites. So if we look at his most popular videos, useful websites that feel illegal to know, 43,000 views, nine useful websites. Here's a tutorial on beacons that was a couple years old. So this was before the explosion. Here's insane websites, 30,000 views. So if Austin really wanted to take advantage of all of the traffic that he was receiving from those shorts, he could have just kept creating useful website content in long form. This, let's see here. This was a compilation. Uh, this was good. This was a long form, 14 minutes. I think this was a compilation. No, no, this is just 10 websites. We did a couple of compilations. Yeah, here's one, 30 minutes of compilation video. 30 minute, feels illegal to know. There's just compilations of his most successful YouTube shorts. The problem arises when you want some versatility in your content. You see Austin did one here, AI video tool to make viral shorts fast. Only got 1.7 thousand views. Here's another one, 10 secret chat GPT life hacks that will change your life, 1400 views. His videos have essentially kind of hit a glass ceiling because they're not exactly related to the shorts that he's creating. Every once in a while, he'll get something that does decently well, 
but for the most part, nothing has been explosive on the long form content side. So here's what you can do if this happens to you. Number one, lean into the content style that made your shorts explode. So make sure that every single one of your long form content is indicative of the same style, the same niche, the same category that your short form content was created in. That's gonna give you the highest likelihood of continued success on your long form content. If that doesn't work, then I would roll into experimentation phase where you start experimenting with a wider range of content in your shorts so that way you can start trying to build another audience in a bigger category. And then if one of those shorts takes off and you get a whole bunch of subscribers for that, then you have established another content vertical for your long form content. And what I mean by content verticals is just a different subcategory that goes under that umbrella category. And last but not least, if you feel like you're not making any traction, your short form content has completely taken over your long form channel, then start a completely new channel and post all of your long forms over there and try to stay in niche. Here's Austin's second channel. It's got 651 subscribers. We've moved over 26 videos and some of them are starting to do pretty well. Here's 800 views. We've got one, I think down here that's 9,000, yeah, this one did really well, 1,000 here. It will take some time, but at least then you'll have your content segmented so that way you can focus on a short form strategy that's going to blow up on shorts over on the shorts channel, and then you can have your long form content housed over here. Moving into 2024, it's actually a pretty good time right now to be starting a new channel. YouTube is prioritizing a lot of long form content channels and so channels are moving pretty quick. I've started a channel that has moved pretty quick. I've actually started a number of channels that are moving pretty quick. Austin started a channel that is moving decently well. So if you're committed to making good content, you're committed to staying in focus, you shouldn't have any problems. Unfortunately though, you might run into that situation where shorts and longs just can't coexist peacefully on one channel. And if that happened to you, I'm sorry. But make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a comment on here your experience, and watch these two videos over here. Catch you on the next one, bye.